Hi, I'm Brad. And I'm David. And we are today at the Kennedy Space Center. And if you've got somebody in your family who loves rockets and space and all that, this is like a paradise. Dream come true, right? Yeah. All right, this kid had a choice to go to Disney or Kennedy Space Center, and he chose to come here. But what today we've got for you is we've got the nine top attractions at the Kennedy Space Center that we're gonna rank in order of coolness. And then we've got two that, what do you say? You, can, you could skip. Yeah, you could skip if you need to. And so we're gonna run down those right now. Okay, David, what have you got for the number one thing to do if you've just got like a couple hours at the Kennedy Space Center? What's the number one attraction? The Space Shuttle Atlantis. Space Shuttle Atlantis, we agree. It is like a museum and inside they've got a ton of things to see, including the actual Space Shuttle Atlantis. <laughs> It's almost worth the price of admission alone coming just to see the Space Shuttle Atlantis on display. And so it's really cool to see all that stuff. They've got movies, all sorts of artifacts in there, and it, it's like a museum and everything all wrapped into one big exhibit. And along with that, you've got the Space Shuttle Launch Experience, which is a simulator. You sit down, it's like almost a ride at an amusement park, right? <laughs> Aside from the Space Shuttle Atlantis, our number two attraction, and it's a close number two, is? The bus tour and the Apollo Center. The bus tour and the Apollo Center. They bundled those together. To get to the Apollo slash Saturn V Center, you've got to take the bus tour, but that's all right, it's awesome. The bus tour, you pass by the vehicle assembly building, as well, which is the big, huge 500 foot tall building that they assemble all the rockets in. And you also pass by all sorts of launch pads and they kind of give you a, a, a tour of those as you're going to the Apollo Center. And then once you get to the Apollo Center, it's all about the, the moon landings and the, the launches and the space race. And what did you like best about that? Um, the actual rocket. Yeah, they've got a lot of the actual rockets in fact, you come in there and you're looking up at the, the Saturn V rocket. They've got a movie that kind of features all of the, all of the newsreels and the, the stories as they came out in the 60s. They've even got a moon rock. That's the one thing that's not on exhibit right now, but they've got a moon rock that you can touch. Yeah. Uh, a cool gift shop there, among other things. Those two alone, the Space Shuttle Atlantis, and the Apollo 5 Center bus tour, that's gonna take up more than half of your day. And so uh, you wanna make sure to plan accordingly, but those, those are just two things you can't miss if you come here to the Kennedy Space Center. And so, okay, uh, now we're down to number three, third best attraction, David, what do you got? The Rocket Garden. Rocket Garden, which is a quick one. It, it takes maybe 10 minutes, you walk right in, and there it is, all the actual rockets, most of them from the 60s that you see and uh, I think I think that's a pretty cool thing. It, you only need about 10 minutes to walk through and kind of read the placards, but very, very cool to see that. Uh, and then the next thing that I might have ranked number three, but we'll, we'll call it rank number four on our list, is the Heroes and Legends exhibit, which is something right when you come into the Spen Kennedy Space Center, it's, it's right there. And what else is in that? There's a cool Hall of Fame. Yeah. And a movie. Okay. Movie and a cool Hall of Fame for astronauts. And so you can see uh, that Hall of Fame and it it's shows a lot of the most famous astronauts of all time. And it's a really cool exhibit. I quite enjoyed that. You need about a half hour, maybe 45 minutes to walk through that to see the movie. We agree that those four are the must-see attractions here at the Kennedy Space Center. And the next five on our list are really cool. Yeah, but uh, maybe not the top one. Not the top of the list, but you definitely still want to plan time to see them. And so, number five on our list is 
the Journey to Mars. Journey to Mars, which is a cool exhibit uh, and kind of a cool museum focused on Mars exploration. There's a lot of hands-on stuff there. You need about, how long would you say? Um, 45 minutes to 30. 30 to 45 minutes there. And it's all focused on future stuff and Mars exploration. Uh, it was kind of right in the middle of the of the entire Kennedy Space Complex, Visitors Complex, and so you can't miss it. That was the next thing on our list. And then we've got... Um, the Universal Theater. Universal Theater, that's right. And this is a good one. There's three or four different movies or exhibits there that uh, are kind of presentations, I guess is what you would call them. We did one that talked a lot about the Hubble the Hubble Space Telescope and some of the plans they've got for the next telescope. I thought that was more worthwhile. It was a 3D exhibit, so you put on your 3D glasses and uh, that was that was kind of neat, right? Yeah. We've got number seven, we've got... The IMAX Theater. IMAX, a lot of people have been to IMAX theaters. They're huge and this one is a lot like a movie theater except they've got some cool space movies there, right? Yeah. Yeah, they've got some some cool stuff and uh, grab some popcorn you can sit down the movies are about 45 minutes long uh, the next thing we've got on our list is uh, is actually and I say this respectfully but a little bit of a disappointment and that is the astronaut memorial and now to be fair a lot of the people I talk to say that it's really neat if you come at night to see the astronaut memorial but I've got a couple problems with it first of all it should be the center of everything. It really should be an, an, a memorial that everybody sees, but it's kind of hidden behind the, the cafe. And man, I, I, in fact, the first time I was here, I even missed it altogether. And so if you're not paying close attention, you can miss this astronaut memorial. It's designed and it's uh, dedicated to those who have lost their life. The Challenger disaster, the Columbia disaster, even Apollo 1. Those astronauts involved are memorialized there and their names are upon a, a black granite wall. And if you're there at night, the light shines through and it's kind of a cool thing, but nobody comes at night. This, the Kennedy Space Center closes at 6 p.m. And so unless you're coming late on a winter day, you're never gonna see it in all its glory. And so I kind of feel like, you know, could have been, should have been designed a little differently. What about you? Yeah, I agree. David agrees. Anything else to say about that? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And what's the last thing on our list that, that you, you need to see? It's number nine out of the things that we've listed. Space shop. The space shop. I mean, it, it's a tourist trap, sure, but there's all sorts of cool stuff in what they deem the largest space shop in the world, right? And so that's something worthwhile to see. We were there, there's an astronaut signing that, that goes on and we got, uh, we got a little space shuttle signed by a real astronaut, which was kind of fun and exciting. And that's definitely worthwhile. Okay, what about the two things that you can skip if you need to? The two things you can skip is, the first one is the Nature and Technology Center. Nature and Technology Center is there right when you come in the front gates. And it's kind of cool. You can walk through in about 10 minutes if you want. It shows kind of the natural habitat. There's some, you know, there's a few alligators in there, not real ones, just stuffed alligators. And it talks about the first settlers to the area and kind of cool to see, but we're not coming to the Kennedy Space Center to, you know, it's not the Natural History Museum. This is, we're here for rockets, yeah. right? Rockets yeah. in space. So yeah. You know, you can skip that if you need to, but like I say, it only takes 10 minutes to walk through there if necessary, so. Okay, what else can you skip if necessary? The astronaut training experience. Astronaut training experience, we were excited for. Turns out you need to sign up beforehand. You might get lucky if it's a slow day and you can jump right in, but first of all, it's expensive. 150 bucks for a five hour experience. They do have some shorter ones that might be only 30 minutes or so. It looks neat, but for most people, you probably didn't plan ahead to do this, or you uh, may not have the time and want to spend the whole day doing the astronaut training experience. And so that's something you can skip. Maybe you have to skip that because you haven't planned ahead. But overall, I think uh, 
those are the two things that you don't need to plan on on just a random day going to the Kennedy Space Center. And so, summing it up, David, how would you rank Kennedy Space Center? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. This kid loved it. And he says it's a can't miss, better than better than Disney World. And you know what? If you're in the Orlando area, it's, it's only 40 minutes outside of Orlando. You can get here quick. And it's kind of a nice change up from, from Disney World and from the other amusement parks. And you get to kind of experience uh, a little bit of uh, American history. And certainly these rockets are really cool to see. You don't want to miss that shuttle Atlantis as well. So come out here, Kennedy Space Center on Cape Canaveral, and uh, we highly recommend it.